along with Bianca Bailey, we are Writers Block Tokyo. And we are here this evening to share with you um, some of our work. And um, hopefully, if you like what you hear, then you may be interested in purchasing copies of our books which we also have here. Um, I'm going to start with a piece that I wrote, and it's called A Song of Affirmation. And this is how it goes. We, we who are the broken, the dispossessed. We, we who are, who have been robbed of our birthright, disrespected, enslaved, entrapped, blinded, used for labor, for sport, for the amusement of others. We, we who are the despised and the exploited. We, we who are the kings and princes and rulers of kingdoms and queendoms of majesty and power and civilization. We, we who are the blessed, the proud, the unbroken, the upstanding. We, we who refuse to die, refuse to bend. We, we who have an unconquered, all-conquering spirit, whether in the old or the new Babylon. We refuse. We refuse to go meekly or willingly. We refuse to accept the persecution, the discrimination, the abuse. We refuse to sacrifice our dignity on the altar of hypocrisy and personal denigration. We will hold on. We will stand up. We will rise. We will ascend. We will not accept the place that others have chosen for us, have consigned us to or try to. We, we will not accept this. We will stand against this. No one else can. No one else will tell us what we can or cannot do. Who we can be, how we should, how we must see ourselves, when to come, when to go. Hell no. For we, we refuse for no one else but us can and will determine our destiny, our kingdoms, our queendoms. We, the sons and daughters of Africa, the motherland, will rise again. That piece was taken from our second collection called Musings 2. So this is it here. And the second one that I'm going to do is called The Cry. And this one is taken from our most recent collection, which was published just in December. And um, this kind of came about because of the spate of killings of black people in the United States and elsewhere over the last couple of years. It seems to be open season on black people. And um, of course, as one would expect, that does not sit well with me. So this piece is called The Cry. From the grave, their spirits cry for justice, but there's none to be found. Who speaks for the nameless? Whose voices cry for the helpless and the weak? Justice, they cry. We want justice. But justice is a fool's errand. It was never meant for such as you. We live in modern day Bantu stands with our Game Boys and iPhones as the pillars and walls of our prisons, imprisoned within those walls as surely as if they were brick and mortar. This is the lot of black bodies and black faces to be bound, gagged, shackled, and shot. This is justice, you say, from within the sanctity, the hallowed, protected sacrum of your white skin. Truly, the castle of your skin, or so you think. 
your imposing castle in which the emperor has no clothes and the walls of which are caving in, though as yet much too slowly. But the walls are beginning to crack and the cracks are beginning to widen. From the grave, their spirits cry out for mercy, mercy and justice, justice from a system that is a deck of cards stacked against us, justice for us who are still being robbed of our being, our rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of happiness in a carnival maze, adrift on an ocean of tears and rivers of blood. And so the cries fall on deaf ears, how long, the man asked, not long, not long, and time is getting short, patience is wearing thin. Our justice will have to be created by our own hands, by our efforts, a new story that is an old one. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Bianca Bailey. Uh, Amber and to all the other members of um, AAYTP, thank you so much for having us. Um, I'm going to read two pieces tonight. The first piece is um, a short, short-ish piece that I wrote this afternoon. So it might be crap. <laughs> Please be kind. We <laughs> will. It's on time, so here it goes. <clears throat> I need not your unfettered admiration. I am not your mother to be sucked dry and then discarded. I need not your instruction. I am not your child to have her immodesty scolded and then seen as an embarrassment. I need not your worship. I am not your queen to be thrown atop the pedestal of your expectations and made into a thing. I am a woman. Red of blood, black of skin, rebellious of spirit, nappy of hair, weaved up when I want it, the mirror of countenance, then ratchet as fuck, I am a woman. <laughs> Strong, weary, fierce, flawed, real, present, I am a woman. And to be none, a few, many, or even all of these things, I need not your permission. Thank you. I was asked to read this piece because um, it's you know fitting given the name of this event is Still I Rise. Um, when I read poems written by other poets, I like to try to find recordings to get a feel of how it's read. But the thing about Still I Rise is that Maya Angelou changed used to change it every time she recited it or read it, so it was always different. So I'm just going to very humbly attempt to read it the way it was originally published in 1978. Still I rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like, I, like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with a certainty of tides. Just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? Shoulders falling down like teardrops Weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? 
Out of the huts of history's shame I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain I rise. In a black ocean, I'm a black ocean leaping and wide. Welling and swelling I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave I and the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Thank you all very much.